So the first problem we're going to look at says Lindsay starts at the peak of a mountain and it takes her 45 minutes to hike 15,840 feet. What was her average walking speed in miles per hour given one mile equals 5,280 feet? So this problem actually is fairly similar to three, four, and five that you just did in your warm up. All the ones, um, all of those three were asking for speed uh, either in miles per hour or one was in feet per second. So hopefully you have an idea of how to start this problem after working through those. So what we're going to do to start it is set up our ratio. Um, speed is always going to be measured in a distance over time. That's the um, units we're looking for. So this one we have 15,840 feet over 45 minutes. And if we divided that out, we would have units of feet per minute, but you notice our problem asks for miles per hour. So we're gonna to need to convert this. So before we start doing any of the division here, let's um, set up our full, full problem and all of the conversion factors we're gonna need. So to get this from feet per minute, um, let's first multiply by the conversion factor to hours. Um, so we know that there's 60 minutes per one hour. So we can set up 60 minutes in our numerator and one hour in our denominator. And then we'll be able to cancel out um, the units of minutes. So now we've changed everything to a units of feet per hour. So now we need to get it into miles per hour. So we'll multiply by um, the conversion factor that was given in the problem, um, one mile over 5,280 feet. So now we can cancel out those units of feet. So we know once we multiply this whole thing out um, and get our final value, the units will be miles per hour, which is what our problem is asking for. So before we just multiply across the numerator and across the denominator, let's see if we can simplify it a little bit, make it a, a easier computation. So if we look over at the 60 in the numerator in our second term and the 45 in the denominator, you might notice that they're both divisible by 15. So if we divide them by 15, we have three, um, 15 goes into 45 three times and 15 goes into 64 times. Then um, looking at the 15,840 and the 5,280, that might seem a little um, hard to do in your head, but what I like to do is kind of break this out. Um, so when I look at this 5,280, I see that that's kind of close to 15,840, so maybe it does multiply. So I think this is really 5,000 plus 200 plus 80 times three, which would give me 15,000 plus 600 plus 240, which is actually 5, uh, 15,840. So it turns out that this actually divides. Um, and then when we multiply across, we have three times four over three, which will simplify to four miles per hour. So that's really just a units conversion problem. Um, again, you just did similar ones in um, you know, your warmups, but this is gonna be great to lead into this con the talk about the distance equals rate times time formula. All right, so to talk about this formula, which is the title of our practice plan, distance equals rate times time, um, we'll lead with just the definition of rate. So. A rate is a ratio between two related quantities and different units. And the one that we just did in the last problem that you dealt with in, again, three, four, and five in your warmups is speed, which is distance over time. Um, uh, what we usually deal with, or you might be familiar with, uh, is the example of miles per hour. So rate is defined as distance over time. And this could be miles per hour where the distance is miles. The time is hours. So this is where we get that formula distance equals rate times time. It's really just a reordering of the definition of rate. So if we rearrange this, we can multiply both sides by t and we get that distance equals rate times time, the formula we had here. If we were looking for time, we can rearrange that by dividing both sides by rate and we get time equals distance over rate. So whenever you're coming up to these distance t distance problems or anything that's asking for rate, it really is just a units conversion and a units balance. So as long as you are aware of what your units are, making sure that you are um, keeping them consistent, balancing them out, um, and not adding units of different, or adding values of different units, um, you don't necessarily need to remember 
the distance equals rate times time formula, you can always come back to it if you remember your units and the definition of rate. All right, now let's look at our second problem. Our second problem reads, Bryce rides his bike at a constant speed of eight miles per hour for 15 minutes, then speeds up and rides at a constant speed of 10 miles per hour for 30 minutes. During these 45 minutes, how many miles did he travel? So this one is a little more complicated than the other ones we've been doing. So the first thing I will point out is that we are looking for miles. So when you're solving these distance rate times time problems, uh, the first thing that you should try and figure out is which one of those three are you looking for? Are you looking for a distance? Are you looking for time? Are you looking for the speed? Um, and what units are they in? So make sure that you identify that first before you get going uh, and save yourself some time. Um, so the first thing we're gonna see is that it's miles, which means distance. So we know we're gonna use distance equals rate times time. And then we'll see that we're actually given two different um, calculations here because he travels at eight miles per hour for 15 minutes, but then he does 10 miles per hour for 30 minutes. So for those 45 minutes, we have two separate calculations to do. So let's look at the first one. The first distance going eight miles per hour at 15 minutes. Again, we wanna make sure that we focus on units. So here we can't actually multiply this out because we don't have the same units here. This is hours and that's minutes. So let's convert so that we can. So I think quickly 15 minutes is a quarter of an hour. So I'm just gonna write it as a quarter of an hour. So now we can say we have both hours so we can cancel those out. So when we multiply this through, we will get miles, which is what we are looking for. So eight times a quarter is two miles. Now we can look at our other one, which was 10 miles per hour. Uh, for 30 minutes and again we have hours and minutes so we cannot be multiplying units that are not the same um, so let's go ahead and convert that 30 minutes is half of an hour so i'm going to substitute that in cancel out my hours 10 times a half gives me five miles so our total distance is going to be the sum of these two which is two miles plus five miles is seven miles and again, we can add these two distances because they are the same units. So always keep your units in there and make sure that you aren't multiplying or adding anything that is not able to be done. All right, the last problem we're gonna look at says, how many minutes faster will Jacob complete a 100 mile drive traveling at a rate of 60 miles per hour than if he traveled at a rate of 50 miles per hour? The first thing I'm gonna target in on is that it says, minutes here how many minutes so that means we're looking for time and we're looking for a unit of minutes we want to make sure it's not we don't give it in hours um, so the formula we're going to be using is time equals distance over rate and then we have two calculations again similar to the last uh, problem because he we're looking for the 100 mile distance at 60 miles per hour and we also have it looking at it at 50 miles per hour and because we're asking for how many minutes faster um, we know that we're going to calculate these separately and then subtract them to get this difference, okay? So first, let's look at how long it's going to take him to travel the 100 miles at 50 miles per hour. Um, for this problem, since we have miles in the top and bottom, we can actually divide out those units. We don't have to do any conversion right here. Um, 100 divided by 50 is going to give us two hours, but the problem, again, wants minutes from us, so we don't want to leave that in hours we wanna convert it to the units that the problem is specifically asking for. And two hours we know is gonna be 120 minutes since there's 60 minutes per hour. All right, so if he goes 60 miles per hour, similarly, we can cancel our miles. Um, 100 divided by 60, we can simplify that to um, five thirds, which is one and two thirds as a mixed number. Um, and then since we know 60 minutes in an hour, one hour is going to give us 60 minutes and then the two thirds of an hour is going to give us the 40 minutes so there's going to be 100 minutes total now that we have them both in the same units and they're both time we can subtract to find how many minutes faster so we have 120 uh, minus 100 gives us 20 minutes so use that understanding of targeting in on which um, what the units are we're looking for and which of those um, three uh, 
terms we're going to be looking for. Are we looking for distance, rate, or time? And make sure to use correct units. Don't add if they're not correct. Don't um, divide it if they're not correct. Just pay attention to what your problem is asking for. And think of it as one big unit cancellation problem, which you've probably done many times in the past in school. And see if you can get through the next five problems and the extension using that.